Let's say you zip tied your Garmin live scope wire. This is a thousand dollar cable and uh, it gets messed up, it breaks, something happens and you want to replace it with your warranty and you have a little mark right here from a zip tie, Garmin will not replace it just because of that zip tie mark. Is that serious? Use electrical tape. Check out that catfish. All right, so I just got back from the hardware store and we now got all the stainless steel nuts, bolts, and washers we need to attach the trolling motor. So that is what we're about to do today. Get it fully attached and then we can move on to the top deck stuff. So I riveted these down the other day and I thought maybe I could just go underneath and get it all tight that way, but I can't. I tried and I figured I was wasting way too much time trying to do that. So I took it apart and now we're just gonna flip this over and attach it from here. It's actually freaking cold today, so all this metal on the boat is freaking freezing. Alright, so we got the base attached to the trolling motor base. Unfortunately, I am going to lose two rivet spots here just because the trolling motor base is covering that up now. But I can drill holes here and add rivets right there. So we should still have four rivets to hold that down. Put that back in place. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get these two bolts in before we completely rivet this thing back to the boat. This is gonna be tough. This is a tough part. I probably could have just done like screws to hold that in, but your boy didn't. So we just got the hard one on. Now we just gotta get this one on. Should be a lot easier. Adam. Yo. What is this weather? I know, right? It's cold. It's finally catching up. Things rain a lot. Things have rain for so long. No, we don't want rain. We do want rain. No, we don't. We want to go fishing, Sarah. No, we want rain. We want rain. <laughs> All right, we got her. Whew. I was using the hand screwdriver because if you use a drill, these lock nuts, they will get super hot and then you'll get it on tight. But then it like tightens up around the bolt and you can never get that back off. That is why I had to cut out a bunch of these. Instead of being able to just screw them out, I had to cut them because I used a drill. And for some reason it just locks tight and you cannot get it off. So now I should be able to hand loosen those no problem if I ever need to. So we got the base attached to the boat. We got the trolling motor attached to the base. Now we just need to rivet these back down. And I'll probably screw a hole through here to get another rivet in there as well. All right, so we got all that. Now we can attach the face here, which I'm gonna go ahead and clean up. All right, she's all clean, looking new again. Shove this on, and this is just held on by all these little screws here. All right, so there is the trolling motor officially attached to the boat. We still need to attach the foot pedal and of course run the wiring over here to the quick disconnect there. But we need to connect the male end here. So let's go ahead and do that.
Oh yeah. Catch and cook using blowtorch only? What? Hope this thing shrinks down enough. Only one I had that would fit. All right, we'll let that harden and then we can plug her in for good. Now I do need to secure down the foot pedal as well. So we got all that done. Now we can run these wires up this wire here, connect it all to that and then down to its final place. And then that will get rid of all these wires here. Food break. All right. Now that we got this all attached, we can go ahead and attach the hydro wave and the fish finder transducer onto the trolling motor here. So let's go ahead and flip this up. All right, so now we're down here at the trolling motor. We got the hydro wave that has to go on top and then we got the transducer that has to go on bottom. So the base of the transducer here it almost has the same two slots here and here as the hydro wave does here and here. So I'm going to run the same zip ties through this transducer mount and through the hydro wave as well. But this will have to go on the transducer like so. You got screws to screw that on. All right, so we just got the transducer on there pretty tight. Now we need to get on the hydro wave. So the instructions on the hydro wave say that this speaker, the angled part has to be facing away from the propeller. So this needs to go this way. And unfortunately that is really the only spot for it facing up. That's all we can do. That's the best we can do. And I'm going to wrap this wire inside of the zip ties just so it stays back away from these propellers all right sorry guys I know that was dark but we just got the transducer mounted here underneath and we got the hydro wave mounted on top so I only had one of these metal clamps but down the road I will definitely be replacing these zip ties here with the two metal clamps that way all of these are metal and nothing can break off I got this wire running through here that is loose, that is not super tight. But yeah, there is everything attached to the trolling motor. Now we just need to run these wires up the shaft of the trolling motor. And y'all might be thinking that looks weird how the wire is coming back right next to this propeller. But that is how the instructions say to do it. I'm just doing what the instructions said. I'll probably be able to pull this a little more this way. So it's not so close. So, I mean, that's it. That's how it's gonna be. There's about three and a half, four inch gap right there. So, but let's go ahead and start running these wires up the shaft now. And guys, do not use zip ties on your transducer wires. Garmin will not replace your warranty if they see zip tie marks. Everyone does it, but be careful because Garmin, they will not replace it. Let's say you zip tied your Garmin live scope wire. This is a thousand dollar cable and uh, it gets messed up. It breaks, something happens and you want to replace it with your warranty and you have a little mark right here from a zip tie. Garmin will not replace it just because of that zip tie mark. Is that serious? Use electrical tape. I just ran these wires through this little groove back here. And now I'm just seeing exactly how high this is, or I guess how deep it would be in the water. So I'm assuming, I don't know, I haven't put it in the water yet, but I'm assuming the water line is going to be about here. Put the tape measure there. That is about actually perfect, about 18 inches, 17, 18 inches, maybe even 16 inches in the water. And like I said earlier, you want between 12 and 18 inches in the water. So I'm going to go up probably an inch or two. Okay. All right, that should do her. That should be in the water perfect. Let's go ahead and keep wrapping up these wires. All right, so there is the finished product. We got the transducer mounted, 
and the hydrowave mounted on the trolling motor. Those wires run all the way up. They follow the trolling motor wires all the way down. It's all taped to this. And then those wires come through right here. And then they go up and then come out here. And of course, it'll be connected to whatever it needs to be connected to from there. But yeah, man, there is the trolling motor all attached and all the wires ran. It's done. There is another look at this. I really don't like the extra wire here, but I don't ever want to have to, I mean, I don't plan to rebuild this boat ever. This is done, I'm done with it. But if I ever take off this trolling motor and replace the trolling motor, I just want there to be extra wire on the wire. I mean, you can only cut it down so many times before you can't connect any new wire to that. So I left some wire there just in case. They say don't run your trolling motor outside the water, but I'm not doing it for very long if it matters really. So flip that. And now we have power. Turn up to one. And she turns on. Turn it off. And she's off. All right, trolling motor works perfect. Sweet. Trolling motor is officially attached. And what that means is I can now comfortably go out to the lake right now. If my big motor ever dies on me, we have the backup trolling motor to get us to shore. And then if this ever dies, it's, it's paddling back to shore. But I would be 110% more comfortable now, now that the trolling motor is attached. And once again, if I could redo it, I'd probably move this tray forward a little bit. But that is only because if I wanted to do a fish finder right here, like what Nate is making or starting to make, my wire would be able to actually fit underneath it. But since my tray is so far back, this wire is not going to fit. But that is the only reason I would move it forward. It's fine the way it is, it works. I'm just gonna have to do the fish finders right here, which is also good because that was my original plan. If I didn't do them here, this would just be an open spot and it'd be kind of weird and ugly. So it all kind of works out. It would have been cool to get the fish finder, but oh well, we'll just have to get one for this spot instead. So, but yeah, I'm happy with it. it looks awesome. Now we have a trolling motor, dude. Now we can move on and start working on all of this, getting all of this framing secured down and then get all these freaking wires ran. By the way, if you don't know what a hydro wave is, it's pretty much an underwater speaker. It imitates fish eating. So turn it on and it makes fish want to eat. Pretty much turns the bite on. So some people say it works, some people say it doesn't. You don't really know. I never had one, but we'll put it to the test, see if it works or not. But if that many people have them on their boats, they most likely work. I mean, let's be honest. People aren't paying 300 bucks for something that might just work, you know? But guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.